Well, thank you, Josh. Uh, you know, this is an experience we all know uh, that the Word of God speaks to us every time a new, when we are in a new situation, uh, we hear different tones, different emphasis, different focus. And I think that's also what is happening with this Rosh Chodesh exercise. The, the, the basis is the same every year, but due to circumstances, we might hear different things. And uh, obviously this time uh, uh, at the situation of the war in Israel, many new uh, insights are coming into that. So I'll, I'll try to highlight some of those that speak to my heart. Uh, First of all, Kislev is the month when uh, it gets darker and darker in the northern hemisphere. Not so much in Israel, but if you are even more to the north in Europe, like I'm coming to you from Prague now, we have friends in, in Finland, it's, it's getting darker and darker. So it's not surprising that the topic of light plays a major role. In fact, at the end of Kislev, we celebrate, or the Jewish people celebrate the festival of Hanukkah, which is known as the festival of light. And uh, after all, this uh, symbol also finds, uh, 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 has found <clears throat> its uh, uh, effect in uh, the early church fathers who decided to place the Christmas celebration at the same time of the winter solstice, which means that this is the darkest period of the year. The, the uh, darkness is getting stronger and stronger. And when it culminates, we celebrate light. And I think this is already quite a strong symbol. And uh, it, it means that even though it gets darker, we do have this hope that this will end and then light will increase. And I'll come to that uh, theme of hope in a minute. but. Uh, speaking about light and darkness, I think we all realized with uh, what is going on now, not only the war, but also the, the response, the different demonstrations for Israel, against Israel, around the world, it is increasingly clear that we are engaged in a battle of light against darkness. And while the Israeli soldiers are fighting on the ground, we are called to fight a spiritual battle. Uh, and part of that is speaking the truth. And in fact, it's it's almost unimaginable that so much lying spirits has, has come into the world. You know, some of these people completely ignore the facts, completely ignore the truth and uh, choose to believe lies. And uh, when light comes, it means that also things are clear. So part of walking in the light also is we need to speak the truth. And we to continue speaking the truth, even if we are flooded by an avalanche of lies. And just maybe that if, if the light shines brightly, and it has shone very brightly on the 7th of October, anybody on this planet could see what evil is and could see, uh, could distinguish between light and darkness. After all, God, in the beginning, God separated light from darkness, and he saw that it is good. And that's something that should guide us. We need to uh, speak the truth, walk in the light, and perhaps some people might just, you know, decide to stop believing the lies because then they have a chance of being saved. But those who are perished and who are uh, falling for all these lies, these are the people who did not uh, embrace the love for the truth. So this is part of the battle that I, I see going on uh, of light against darkness, on, of uh, truth against lies. Now, uh, with the hope, it, it really is so that after the end of Kislev, the light is slowly beginning to come back. Uh, the, the days are getting longer, nights are getting shorter. So it is a symbolic victory in the year's cycle of light against darkness. And that is certainly a reason for hope. We have this proverbial saying of a light at the end of the tunnel. and uh, Maybe that it's also, uh, it will become relevant. We'll have to see what uh, all transpires during this month of Kislev, but maybe, maybe we will see some light uh, in, in all the darkness. Uh, there's another story which uh, is becoming relevant to me, and that is about the flood, because uh, the flood started, as we uh, read in Genesis, it started in the previous month of Heshvan, on the 17th of Heshvan, and it rained for 40 days. 
And so if you calculate the 40 days, we end at the end of this month of Kislev. And that means that at the end of this month, it stopped raining. It is not yet, you know, the, the, the happy end, but it is at least the beginning of it. It is the beginning the, that the catastrophe does not increase anymore. Now it stopped raining. Uh, it will take a, a long time before everything is settled again, but it is already a beginning of the process of uh, rehabilitation and restoration. And uh, th this is certainly my hope, and we sure are praying that the war is as short as possible. And it looks like Israel needs to do the job thoroughly, but that's only the first phase. And after all the terrorist tunnels and infrastructure is destroyed, this is not the end of it, but a longer period of rehabilitation may come. So we, we might even liken it to uh, the situation when the waters, the, the earth was covered with water, waters of the flood, but then the water started receding. And then in the end, after all, a new beginning. And in fact, we are also praying for the people of Gaza that they might have a new beginning after all this uh, terrorism infrastructure and the, the terrorist mindset is completely crushed, there may be a, a new beginning. So that is all a source of hope, which is also found in the very uh, word of Kislev, because uh, we can find a few scriptures where uh, words derived from Kislev with the same root appear. And I would like to quote Psalm 78, uh, verses 5 to 7. <laughs> Psalm 78 from verse 5, uh, for God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children. Now, this, this is very uh, well known. This is the, the Israel's propensity to really remember and carry it on to next generation and next generation. Now, the purpose of it all is that they may set their hope, that Keslam, their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. So even we can apply it to ourselves. We are called to set our hope in God. And uh, studying the word of God, remembering, teaching the children is very much an integral part of this mindset. And also Job, we can find it in Job 31, 24. He's, he declares that he had not put his hope in gold. Uh, in fact, we can put our hope in many different things. So the Bible is encouraging us to put our hope in God alone. And that is also something that will carry us through even this difficult period. But there is another quite a surprising element which goes together with Kislev, and that is the fact that the word can also mean foolishness. And we can find it in, in Ecclesiastes in chapter 7, uh, where Solomon declares in verse 25, it's Ecclesiastes 7.25, I applied my heart to know, to search, and seek out wisdom and the reason of things, to know the wickedness of folly, even the foolishness and madness. Well, uh, that really uh, poses a, quite an interesting question. Uh, if the same word can point both to hope and to foolishness, how can we possibly recognize that? What have these two things uh, in, have in common? Well, I think one of the things is that how God declares through Isaiah, my ways are not like your ways. Uh, as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than, uh, than yours. And Paul is uh, saying something similar at the end of Romans 11 when he finishes his expedition on Israel and God's plan with Israel. There are things which in our human understanding, in our human mind, seem hard to comprehend or even illogical or foolish, if you will. But uh, God has a different uh, way of looking at things, and we will always do well to cling to his understanding. And sometimes we really need to renew our mind because our minds are flooded by the spirits of this world uh, to the point that we might not even recognize what God thinks, even if it is logical. And what if he does something that is, does not appear logical to our human uh, mind? 
And uh, here is a, a great uh, scripture from First uh, Corinthians when Paul actually brings these two concepts together. He says in chapter one from verse 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. We preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man. And the weakness of God is stronger than man. Isn't this wonderful? It's, it's such a source of uh, comfort, actually. The foolishness of God is wiser than man. And the weakness of God is stronger than man. And in fact, when we preach the gospel, we have always seen this reaction. It, uh, there's no place to remain neutral. Either you embrace it or you call it a foolishness. And uh, so uh, Paul even says in 2 Corinthians that we are the fragrance of Christ. And that it causes, by, by the, our very being, if we are filled with the Spirit, if we are born again, we cause reaction in people. And it is a twofold. There are two options. Among those who are being saved uh, and among those who are perishing. To the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death. And to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And I believe that as we go into these uh, last days, and especially at this difficult time, this dichotomy is growing stronger and stronger. There are people who are uh, uh, believing lies, who uh, when they hear the truth, they get uh, stubborn and they reject it and they feel that this is a complete foolishness and they are perishing. And yet there are others who in the same situation, like the two thieves on the cross, they have met a very different fate and they were in the same situation. So those who believe in the truth, who have the, developed the love for the truth, they are getting saved by the very same set of circumstances. And I believe that what is going on in Israel is a wake-up call to all the people and to the house of God first, but also to others, that they might choose life, that they might choose to believe the truth and not the lies. So that is also the, the part of this dilemma of uh, the something which looks like foolishness, but in fact is, is the power and the wisdom of God. And I believe that God really wants to uh, remind us of these uh, facts as we are battling uh, in the heavenlies, as we are struggling for the truth, and as we are sometimes, you know, desperate looking at, at the multitudes who choose to believe lies. But God is in for complete control, and he just wants to remind us that this has been his way always. And may we just, may we be found faithful. So that's my message for this month.